please take a moment to send us a comment and to share the link to this broadcast with your friends and family in social media. We believe in the power of prayer. Send us your prayer requests by clicking the link in the comments area of the broadcast. Thank you for supporting our ministry. Giving is now easier than ever with these options. You can use e-giving by touching the link that is in the comments section of the broadcast, or you can also use e-giving on your cell phone by following the instructions for texting listed here. Love Center Atlanta will be hosting a back to school backpack giveaway on Wednesday, August 19th at 11 a.m. Please come and get school supplies for your children entering the new school year until supplies last. We're in this together. Please submit your prayer request using the link that will be provided in the comments area of this broadcast. Start your day with two early in the morning. Monday through Saturday at 8.15 a.m. on Facebook Live. Study God's Word with us on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. on Facebook Live or watch the rebroadcast on YouTube or Instagram TV.
The Love Center's Affirmation. At the Love Center, we believe that Jesus, the Word of God made flesh, is the bread of life. This study of the bread satisfies the hunger of our soul to know the way of God and to know His heart. When we accept and believe what we study, we also satisfy the thirst of our mind to understand the mind of God. The Holy Spirit will always be faithful to us as He reveals through the Scripture all the things about God that we need to know and understand. We are blessed as we break bread together. Let's be blessed together right now with Pastor Byron L. Broussard. Praise the Lord, everybody. It's a beautiful Wednesday evening. We're here at Love Center Atlanta. We're ready. We've been praying and asking God to reveal himself, asking the Holy Spirit to fall fresh, to sit present, and uh, show us exactly, to be precise, to be real, to be clear. I'm excited in my soul. I'm blessed and thankful. And uh, as I try uh, to remember to do each week, those who are making this happen are very important. They're precise, and I thank them for their ministry of excellence as we present the broadcast uh, to you. Pray for us now as we all do the best we can to make sure you are taken care of. Let's pray. God, we love you. We thank you. We've grown to a place of understanding. Thank you so much for the journey. Now we honor you. Your word is open before us. You allow us, please, to dig inside and come up with jewels for life. They will help us first and then turn us into people who can help others, just like you planned. We honor you now. We call your name, Jesus. And all of us say together, amen, amen. It's a wonderful thing to get in God's word. Open yours now to the first piece of text found in Luke chapter eight. Come on, hurry, let's get there now. Luke chapter 8. Now, this story is a parable, essentially. And a parable is a simple story, and it's used to illuminate things to the saints and cover them a little longer to those who are not quite as respectful of God's word. But uh, they're very important. And Jesus, from time to time, chose to tell these stories to bless the people. Now, I may as well let you in on a little tidbit. One of the reasons that I'm so thrilled about tonight's lesson is because it um, is a template for uh, what we call expanding ministry, blowing up, um, tearing it out of the frame. In this uh, text and, and in this parable, Jesus is opening up the world of the gospel and attempting to introduce what it would feel like and be like for the kingdom of God uh, to be present in the earth, for his influence and his power, his authority to rule and to reign and to change people's life, the quality of life that could be had if people would be more than religious and enter into a serious relationship with the Lord. It's just a thrill to think about it. I want to pass a little bit off, and I'll try, I'll, I will try, I promise, I will try to contain myself and not uh, uh, pull off big, big chunks. How about we start with some, some bite-sized pieces right now. In chapter 8, it says, uh, after this, this is the NIV, I think, it, I think it says it really, really well. After this, Jesus traveled about from one town and village to another proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. The 12 were with him and also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Mary, called Mary Magdalene, from whom seven demons had come out. Joanna, the wife of Shusa, the manager of Herod's household. Susanna, many others. These women were helping to support them out of their own means. While a large crowd was gathering, and the people were coming to Jesus from town after town, he told this parable. A farmer, listen closely, a farmer went out to sow his seed, and as he was scattering his seed, some fell along the path. It was trampled on, and the birds ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, and when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. 
In verse 7 it says, Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up and yielded a crop a hundred times more than was sown. A hundredfold blessing. A hundred times. Now, there's so much in that. Just tuck every piece you can and we'll try to pull them one at a time and see how they fit in this puzzle and uh, see what God is speaking and saying in the story, in the parable of the sower. It's also been called the parable of the soils because the ground that the seed went in, well, we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, in, you, in, in the breakdown of scripture, there are three important things. After it's listed, Matthew, Mark, and Luke are places that this text is found in the New Testament. But, but beneath there on, your, on your, uh, your sheet, I hope that you were able to download it. If not, just follow along with me. I promise I'll, I'll hit them all. Prelude, parable of the sower, and then the parable explains. It's very simple. The prelude, the introduction in verses 1 through 3, and then in verses 4 through 10, the actual story, the actual parable, and then the explanation of it in verses 11 through 15. Why don't we start, I feel like, I feel like we got there. Uh, why don't we start with verses 1 through 3? And uh, one, one, you'll see in, in a minute why it's just, I'm off the chain excited about uh, 1 through 3. Um, it says, after this, Jesus was on a, a journey, on a, on a crusade, and he was going from one town and village to another town. He had made the decision that it was time to tear everything out of the paper, get the, get, get the, get the groundwork for the church laid, to, to get the disciples and the followers in some deep level training, to put them th to some tests and some challenges. All the stuff that, that he had seeded into them, that he had taught them, all the midnight conversations, all the early morning workshops, all those things, he wanted now to, to, to start letting them get their feet wet in some, in, in some, some, some theory and some practical, some testing. And um, when, when he tells this story, he's, he's laying out a template or a plan, if you will, for the future. And so look at it here. One of the first and most important elements of Jesus' ministry that differed, it was complete opposite from the, from the things that existed at that time, was the way he dealt with women. And right out of the gate in verse 1 through 3, he deals with this and he doesn't cover it, the, the, the writer doesn't cover it. It was so significant, it was so uh, abnormal, it was so different that the writer couldn't help himself. He, he just, he, 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 he said, I ain't scared, I'm, I'm going to write it. I, this, this has got to be shared, it's got to be told. And here's what happened. Jesus says, in going from town to town, he had to have support. And he had to have some special people to support him. Some people support things when they're new and fresh and when they're cheap and easy. But it takes another kind of unit, another kind of person, another kind of individual to really look more deeply into the concept. And, and oh my God, how, how many people work at a company and really don't know much about the company they work at? How many people uh, may work at a company and try, try to, you know, get a check as long as they can be there and never really research the history of the company, uh, what the goals of the company and objectives of that company are. All that's important to a person like this is that they get their money on time. But there's another kind of individual, a, a, a strange bird. People have nicknames for them and all of that. What, it, what, it, what they are are interested what, what they are are potential uh, pillars and foundational people for something that you're trying to make solid and have to last a long time. Indeed, while Jesus was building the ministry and training the disciples, he wanted this ingredient in early. If you were baking a cake, you need the stuff that goes, and let's, let's just say everybody think right now, 
and don't maybe maybe don't think long. Pound cake. Everybody think pound cake. Pound cake got its name because you need a pound of butter, a pound of sugar, and a pound of flour. You got that. If you don't have that, you got an own ache, not a pound cake. You got to have the stuff that goes in. And Jesus understood in order to have a viable entity that could take the hits and the ups and downs and the, and the bad times and times where it was uncomfortable and raining, he had to have some solid women. And he had to have some women who were different. I find this text, and we'll get to this text in just a moment, these three grateful women that, that are named at the top of it, they are grateful. They are grateful, filled with gratitude. And they're coming off the heels of the story of the woman breaking the, that, that had the ointment in the box. She was grateful as well. And the story, the text begins after this. After, the, after what? After that story about that woman. This story that includes these comes into focus. After this, and it says these women, first was Mary. Now Mary's case was deep. She had been healed. All these women had been helped and healed by the Lord. Helped and healed. Put that in your notes. Helped and healed. When people have been helped and people have been healed, they have a tendency to walk a little bit deeper, hallelujah, with the Lord. These women had been helped and these women had been healed. Mary had been cured of seven demons. Joanna, the wife of Shusa, the manager of Herod's household, I would imagine she was a nervous wreck because Herod was an unscrupulous ruler. He was ruthless. And I'm sure she had heard and seen and been a part of some wild and crazy things. And so you've got to understand, it's very important to understand that these women were grateful because of what had occurred in their lives between Jesus and them. You were going to, you, you, ever, you, you ever heard somebody who's been in church a while, they say, you can't make me doubt him. I know too much about him. These women had been healed and helped and they were all the way in. Where you go, I go. What you go through, I go through. What you need, I take out of my substance. The word is careful to mention in this that these women were helping to support the Jesus and his ministry. Not just Jesus. They, didn't, they weren't just, don't get it twisted and, 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 and pervert the, the, the thought. They weren't just in love with Jesus, and so they were giving him, his, give, giving him their money. They were supporting the ministry. And so let's talk quickly about that. When Jesus rolled, he rolled with a posse. There was a crew. There were a lot of men who were hungry and had to eat. And so their means were being used to contribute to the needs, whether it be food, clothing, temporary shelter of this group of disciples, these followers of the Lord. Four, verse four says, while a large crowd was gathering and people were coming, they were interested. The ministry was no longer a secret. Something happens in the life of serving God that creates an opportunity for what was unknown, undercover, in incubation, not ready for prime time, to get out in front of the people. This was that time in the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, he only spent three years in ministry, in, in open ministry in the earth. The rest of the time Jesus was alive, he spent preparing for what he's doing right now. It's hot, it's red light time. This, the, the, the red phone is ringing, is, is, is off the hook. This is time, and right now, our study tonight is at the opening of this, and that's why it's such an important, important text. Let's keep going. Uh, a farmer, this is the beginning of the story in verse 5. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell on the path. They got walked on, trampled on, and the birds scooped them up. Now, some people would say they were wasted, but in God's creation, everything's important. So the birds had to eat, and so they got that seed that fell on the path that the farmer was going on to get to where he was going to spread the rest of the seed. Next thing. 
it was trampled on birds, ate it up. Verse 6 says that the next seed, some fell on rocky ground where, where the ground wasn't that deep. The earth, the dirt on top of the, the, the rock wasn't that deep. And because of that, moisture wouldn't stick around. And there was no way for those seeds to have enough moisture to burst open and for what was inside of them to spring up through the ground. That was, that was, that was not a place for permanent growth. But when the farmer tilled the soil, he tilled it all, he turned it all over, even soil that had rock right underneath it. And, and unless somebody came behind while they were tending to the big field, and did the detail work. Somebody think about that. There's a, there's a role in ministry for all kinds of people. There are some people who do the big heavy lifting. And if you want the trees knocked down and the field cleared, you call that person. They're destroyers. They're in the demolition. They tear stuff up. They're rough and, and, and crazy. And they knock it out. And, and when you look at it, you say, oh, yeah. Now we can get to work. That's different. And God calls these type of people. And he, he puts them in, in service and in circulation in the ministry. And he has to have somebody. Uh, and for those who believe that we can just all do what we want, no, you've got to have somebody to manage that kind of soul. You have to have somebody to put up with, to train, to chastise, rebuke, to love on, to pick them up off the ground when they get sad over some mess they've made and don't want to tell and talk about, that they require supervision. And so in the house of God, there are people who have been called, graced, anointed, and have that in them to do these different things. They have people who are working, and they're in the demo, and then you have people who are detailed. They go behind them and say, oh, wow, we got rocks in here. And, the, and you need all of these kinds of people when you're trying to grow the ministry. As Jesus is laying the template for that, he shows the necessity for a variety of people. Even the women that he called were different. They came from these unique backgrounds, A to Z. Mary, in her own little world, doing her own little thing, gets full of the devil, has to be delivered. Uh, then you have the woman working, uh, Joanna, the wife of Shusa, uh, the manager of, 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 of Herod's household, they're on another level. They're, they're, they're dealing in, in government and administration. And so they've been a part and privy to some dastardly deeds just to keep things grinding and going in the governmental sector. And so you have these women coming from these different worlds, but all of them have been blessed and healed and helped by Jesus. It's a beautiful thing when you look around the church and you don't see everybody being the same. You, pe you see he people who've been saved from this and you see people who've been saved from that and you see some been saved from the other and you know what I mean. And so when Jesus puts them together, not just for an assembly, not just for praise, not just for worship, not just for prayer, but for the service. He's on the move now. They are out of the building, out of a sanctuary. The type of ministry that we have to almost take baby steps to learn how to do right now because our buildings are not able to be used, because our normal patterns of serving God have been torn, have been shut down, and we are now saying, okay, what do you do? when you can't use the church house? What do you do when you can't gather more than a handful of people? Do you shut everything down? Does the ministry stop? The answer to that is absolutely no. You do whatever you can until the opportunity starts to expand, and then you do some more. Write that in your spirit. I do whatever I can until the opportunity expands, and then I do some more. And this pause button that gives you a time to read your Bible, that gives you a little more time to reflect and meditate on the things of God, even the depth of your salvation and your relationship that allows us to look in the mirror and see whether or not our prayer life is adequate to go where we say God has called us to go, whether or not our consistency with God, our maturity level with God, all of these things 
in the middle of a challenging time like this can be evaluated and worked on and improved. Hallelujah. And you see the ministry go from good to better to best in the middle of a hellish pandemic. Now, I want all of us, please, be aware of what's going on, but not consumed by the news. Be aware. Do not ignore what needs to be discussed among the saints, prayed over by the saints. Do not ignore what's stressing people out. We who are called to serve God must be aware of what's causing problems for the people we're serving. You can't serve me well if you don't know what's hurting me. You can't serve me well if you don't care about what's hurting. And you certainly can't serve me well if you're condescending and you don't care about me. Hallelujah. These different graces are necessary in order to serve the Lord well during the times we're in. Now, let's, 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 let's uh, chew a little bit more of this text. In verse 7, other seed fell among thorns. After the rock seeds fell on the, on the path, the birds ate them. After the others fell on the rocks, that's number two, and, and they shot up out of the ground right quick, but there wasn't enough to sustain them, not enough dirt, not enough water to sustain them. And when the sun came out, it just burned them up. This third level, uh, this third part of the, of, of the sowing, uh, the farmer sowing the seeds uh, was this. They came up through the ground, but then the thorns and the sticker bushes and the thistles and the darnel. There's, there's, a, there's a plant, there's, a, there's a, a weed that mimics wheat. And uh, when you look at this particular text in the expression that Matthew gives us, it talks about letting the wheat and the tare grow together because this particular weed looked like wheat. And, and, and when uh, it started to grow up, by the time they realized, Lord have mercy, that there was a wolf in sheep's clothing, so to speak, in the field, by the time they realized it wasn't wheat, but it was weeds, it was already established. And in order, hallelujah, in order to pull it up out of the ground, you would have also had to disturb the root system of the wheat. So you would have cut your nose to spite your face if you had tried to pull up those weeds at that time. Look at somebody, write it, type it in, say they waited too late. They weren't paying attention. And, and, and the enemy came in and sowed weeds among the good wheat. That can happen. And you know what? Early on when ministry is being established, things like that can happen. Or when a ministry gets old and, 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 and uh, set in its way and unconscious, believing we're just going to cruise on into heaven, that can happen. We must remain diligent, vigilant, alert, committed, all of those things. And one thing that helps us to do that is, one, to constantly have babies being birthed into the ministry. Babies require attention. Babies keep you young. When I talk about baby Christian, if you want to not get uh, crotchety, grouchy, uh, detached, and out of touch, let the church keep growing and having baby Christians. They remind you of yourself. They inspire you. They get on your nerves. They aggravate you. They ask you questions. They also watch you, so they keep you from living too raggedy. All of the things that need to happen for a growing church because they say, excuse me, Brother John, can I ride with you? And if Brother John was thinking about hitting that little pint on the way to the meeting, he can't hit his pint. Uh, uh, Sister Sue, can I, can, can I come visit you at your house and learn how to cook? I need to learn how to cook because I just got married and my husband, won't, he likes to eat out and I don't know much about cooking. And, and you, you, when you're at your house in your free time, when you're off from work, you like to gossip. And so you have to adjust yourself when your church is growing and constantly seeing the birthing of new Christians. It's a beautiful thing. And so when I see this text and when I see the seed, which is the word of God, falling on the ground, which is among the people, I see different results because whenever the gospel is preached, there's going to be a different result. If you have 10 people hearing the gospel, you're going to have 10 ways that it's received because they, they come from 10 different backgrounds most of the time. And so look at the text. You see others, they fell among thorns. What happened? They grew up and they got big and they looked good. 
but they couldn't handle the pressure of being blessed. Some of the stuff that choked them out on the surface seemed like a blessing. It seemed good, but they got distracted. Have, can you imagine? Have you, have, have you ever done this? I just say, put it on yourself, or maybe let's talk about your friend. You, you say, Lord, I need a car. Oh, Jesus, I need a car. I'm praying. I'm fasting. I'm seeking God's face. I'm telling anybody who will listen to me. I need transportation. I'm tired of walking. I need a car. And when I get it, I'm going to just serve the Lord. I'm going to pick up people and bring them to church and Bible study. I'm going to do this. And when you get the car, nobody see you at church for a month, month and a half, two months. Why? Because, whoo wee it's been a long time since I could get in my own car and go where I want to go. It's just human nature. And so some of those seeds got choked because they got caught up. Hallelujah. Holler with me. Caught up. Be careful to walk in Christ and with Christ so that you don't get caught up and end up getting choked by your blessings. Yes, I said it. You can get choked by your blessings because whatever you begin to love and care for, more than Christ is a hindrance to what Christ has given you and intended for when he blessed us with whatever it is that has come into our lives. Let's go to eight. Still, other seed fell on good soil, came up, yielded a crop, a hundredfold crop, hundred more than had been put in the ground. And when he said this, he called out, whosoever hath an ear, let him hear. Hallelujah. Whenever Jesus put a message out, he put it out in front of everybody and then had a tendency to isolate those who really wanted it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He did it publicly. He gave everybody. Everybody gets a chance, but everybody doesn't want that level. Everybody gets a chance. Well, I want to go somewhere to give me a chance. If you're breathing, you got a chance. If you hear the gospel, you got a chance. You can sit in a church or sit in a Bible study or be online listening to one like you are tonight and receive the same message that somebody else receives and do a wonderful work and a hundredfold blessing come out of it. Tenfold, twentyfold, thirtyfold, fortyfold, fifty, sixtyfold, hundredfold blessing. Just you, because you were just, just waiting. You were like, I can't wait. And when he got it, you were like, yes, that's what I needed. And you, thank you, Jesus. Now show me what to do. And you stuck with Jesus, and he gave you instructions, and you made some mistakes, and you corrected your mistakes, but you stuck with it. Because down in your heart, all you wanted to do was get something from God, get a chance to use it, and then learn. Look in this, look, look in this layout. I put a few things out here. In order, well, I want you to consider this. And then I'll get back to eight in this text, or eight or nine in this text. It says that you have an active Jesus, an active Christ, who's primarily focused on spreading the gospel. There's some harmony in the gospel of, of Matthew and Mark and Luke, and it tells the story over and over of Jesus sowing seeds in the kingdom of God. This is not going to be done. Seeds will not be sown into the lives of the people without some pushback and resistance. It's not easy. And there are requirements. We can't do it any way we feel like it. We can't just think of a good idea and then say, now I'm called to do this and I'm serving the Lord. You, one, have to have respect for God's word. You, two, have to handle that word correctly and even skillfully, which means you're going to have to get up under somebody who knows what they're doing. Praise the Lord. There's absolutely nothing wrong with submitting to someone who's been where you're trying to go. Hallelujah. They can help you avoid dumb mistakes. They can keep you from uh, not, not just uh, making yourself feel and look silly and being embarrassed, but they can keep you even with your very life. Because some things that we do in serving God actually could actually claim a life if you get twisted and caught up in what we call the game. Now, the third thing is you have to apply the word to your daily life every day, not just Sunday, not just Wednesday, not special events, not conferences alone, but we walk with Christ and we represent him and serve him and seek to learn him what he wants us to do for the building up of the kingdom 
each day that he gives us breath in our body to live. And finally, four, we've got to believe the word. And we've got to believe it for results because Jesus' aim was to grow the ministry, build the kingdom. That's why he, he received these women. He healed them. He helped them. And, and that's why people like Zacchaeus had a spot in the ministry and in the heart of the Lord. That's why he opened it to the Gentiles so that it wouldn't just be an elite, exclusive little group of people who develop some habits and then they just walk like, you know, ants in a row doing the same thing over and over and over till all of them had lost interest in it and they were just competing for top spots and recognition. That was never the intention of Christ, never the intention of gospel. That's why he got all kinds of people, hallelujah, from all kinds of levels of life, and he just poured into them. Praise the Lord. Can you imagine yourself with the fire of the Holy Ghost in your heart, and you just want to see people not only get saved and not go to hell, but you want to see each one of them learn how to serve God with what they have. Praise the Lord. You want, you want, you want to see each one of them learn how to use their gifts. I'm sitting in a room right now with people who are serving God, and I've watched them, some of them when they got saved, some of them when they first went deep with God, others of them when they began to mature physically, chronologically, when they got married, when they got families. I watched God bless their lives. I watched God pull them closer. I watched them wrestle and struggle with old habits from their history, from their family history. I watched them get victory through the power of the Holy Ghost and Jesus. He does it not just one time for one group of people, but he does it over and over and over again. I heard my pastor say one time, he said stuff with a seed in it is designed to reproduce over and over again. After God created it and put the seed inside it, it was designed to reproduce after its kind over and over and over and over again. You're not the first Christian to be on fire for Jesus and serve God in a wonderful way. No, hopefully will you be the last Christian, should the Lord delay his coming to grow and to mature. But this is a process of Jesus calling, blessing, doing what's necessary, putting what's necessary in people's lives so that they can build up the kingdom. That's the story he told. Let's see if we can land this plane. You have to have respect for God's word. You have to handle the word correctly. You have to apply the word not to the other people, but to your personal life. And you've got to believe that the word will work. Work in you, for you, and for others. The word will work in us. The word will work for us. And as we serve God, the word will work for others. And then that's the testimony. Because people are saved by the blood of the Lamb Jesus stretched out on the cross, dying to separate us from sin, to cover that sin and hide it from the Father and not allow it to be a hindrance anymore. And then they're also drawn and won by the word of our testimony. When you look at somebody and say, I know he can bless you. I know he can heal you because he healed me and he blessed me. Hallelujah. I know he can help you change because if you had known me back in the day, and you know what a work God has done in my life. Even if you thought you wanted to talk about me, I'd show you a picture of my history and you would repent for even saying one single word. You said, because my God, you're so far from where you used to be. That is the constant seed sowing testimony of the, the sower, the farmer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is the intention of God to sow into us and lift and build us up, and then for us to repeat his behavior. We are the righteous seed of the living God. What a blessing. Amen. All right. A few terms. Let's get your dictionary. You're going to be a walking, talking Christian dictionary. Number one, seed. It is a source uh, of development growth. You look at a little seed, you say, that ain't nothing but a seed, and you might mishandle it. You might not treat it right. You might think it's nothing. But inside that seed is the future. Praise the Lord. It is the intention of God for that seed to have an opportunity to present itself and then reproduce after its kind and bear fruit. 
That's, whenever you see seed, you, you see potential. When, and, and when you see these people walking around here with all the bruises and bumps and crazy things about them, these are walking seeds, and each one of them has potential to grow and develop, have the, have the crazy stuff cut down to a minimum, and then switched up for the good. Praise the Lord. Everything that you were can be washed, healed, graced, anointed, flipped over, and used for the glory of God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I believe in that. I believe. I've seen it happen so many times. It's such a blessing to behold. Next thing is, seed is, seed is a, a, a source of development of growth, of flowering plants, unit of reproduction, and then the final piece of that definition is capable of developing into another such plant, meaning it can reproduce after its own kind. Next thing, the sower is the active person. It's the person who scatters the seed. And, and what is the seed? Remember, the seed is the word of God. The seed is the word of God. And the people who bring the seed, the preachers, the teachers, the evangelists, the prophets, the apostles, they, they, they bring this word, this seed, everywhere they can, following the example of Jesus in the early part of this text. Do you remember when Jesus was going to every village, every town, had his disciples with him, and the, it was all about getting the word out about God's plan for our lives. That you, what is the prayer that he taught us to pray? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. What? Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. You, and, you know, I know we'd be speeding when we say the prayer, but, but that's, that's up at the front. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He wants there to be a correlation, a connection, a matchup between the plan of God and the life of the people. The, the vertical, the up and down, God at the top, we under him, and all the people in the earth with us imitating, becoming conformed to the image of God through the teachings of Jesus Christ. That's how the kingdom spreads. That's how we become a majority in the earth with the power and plan of God, an active, devoted, and committed heart, and the Bible, the word of God and truth as our inspirational plan. We look at the book every day. We get inspired by the book every day. Day and night, there's a word for the book and a punch. It is the law of the Lord. We delight ourselves in the law of the Lord, and we meditate on this day and night. That's how the kingdom grows. That's how the kingdom spreads. That's how the seed goes around. And before you know it, have, have you ever bought a car of a certain color? Like you get a, if you get a blue car, and then you, when you go on the road by, in the next week, all you see is blue car. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because you know you're looking, you're looking for your kind. And, and when we start to spread, listen to me, y'all. I want you to look at me and listen to me if you've ever felt isolated and alone because you're just learning about Christ and you feel so lonely. You miss your old friends. You, man, it's, it's, you know, I might have made a mistake. I'm coming all deep in God. Now I'm lonely. I don't have nobody to run with, nobody to hang. And these church people, they're looking at me sideways because they don't know me. And you know, I'm, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. And a lot of people go back out in the street because they feel like that, isolated and alone. Let me tell you something. Look around, you'll see some more blue cars. You'll see some more people who don't know much either. You'll see some more people who need some help like you need help. And, and, and if you're bold like that and you put some, actually, you remember back in the day when we were in the, at the party, maybe at the club, maybe at school, in college, wherever you might have been, military, wherever you might have been, you would look around, and if you were lonely, you go find somebody to be with and find something to get into with them. Now that you're saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Spirit of a living God, you look around and you find somebody to be with. You find somebody to grow with. It's just that you won't be going to hell and you won't be killing yourself with the things that you get into. You'll be building yourself up, building the kingdom up. I know people have been in church 10, 15, 25, 35 years and have never thought about what I'm trying to share tonight. 
They feel isolated, alone, and they are bored with their Christian service. And you don't holler that with me, type it in, text somebody. You don't have to be in that situation. No one in Christ ought to be bored. No one in Christ ought to be unemployed. Hallelujah. You got a job. You just got to get to it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The next thing, after the sower, the person who scatters the seed for growing things, the parable is a simple story that's used usually to illustrate a moral or spiritual lesson. And it's told by Jesus in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Root, the next word, root. And I know I'm from Louisiana, and y'all always be messing with people from down there talking about y'all work, believe in roots. I got to Georgia, they were talking about roots. But a root is not just that. A root is the part of a plant which attaches itself to the ground to support the plant. It goes underground so that it can get nourishment from the earth. It can get water out of the ground. And it connects the stem or the trunk, if it's a tree, above the ground to the system beneath the ground to keep the plant healthy. In order for us, Lord, we've got to be rooted and grounded in God. Hallelujah. That seed got in the soil and a part of it stayed there. That seed got into some good ground and connected with the elements there and got fed by that good stuff and started to live a good life and got blessed and turned into a blessing because that's what bearing fruit is all about. The seed, you go all the way from seed to fruit. Thank you, Jesus. All the way from seed to fruit with seed in it. God wants you to come all the way from a little nothing. Just a little. How, you going to heaven? Yeah, barely. It wasn't for Jesus. Hallelujah. If, if it wasn't for prayer, it wasn't for, I'm, 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 I'm hang on. Yeah, yeah. And then to grow from that point. And I pray to God, just take a few seconds and think about yourself in the early stages, in the infant stages of your faith and how far you have come now from a seed to fruit, all the way from seed to fruit with seed in you. That is the plan of God. Some people, have you ever looked at somebody and you look in their eyes and look like nobody home when it comes to discussing the things of God? That person is still carnal. That person is still carnal. And when Jesus told parables, you could look at the way they were received by the different people. Some people just lit up like somebody had put a match up on them and they caught fire. And some people were like Scooby-Doo didn't have a clue because something in your heart has to be hungry in order for the word to work in your life. And I'm not trying to tell you to discriminate. I'm just telling you to discern. In order to be a good soldier for Christ, I don't care how much you love them, I don't care how they're your friend, your cousin, your peeps, you must discern who you're with to see what stage of development they're in in the process from seed to fruit with seed in it. Amen? Amen. A little bit more. Darno, you got to watch out for a wolf that look like sheep. Hallelujah. Looks and sounds can be deceiving. There are people who are with us, around us, attending with us, who are not of us. Try the Spirit, by the Spirit, see whether it be of God, and then you'll know how to pray for the person. You'll know how to deal with the person. You'll know how to pour into and invest, or you'll know to avoid the person. We love everybody. One of, the, one of the best lessons, I think I can, I can get it out of this, and if you're going to be part of the kingdom and a seed sower, or you're going to be a person who helps things grow, a gardener tending the garden, some of the details that, that are in the places that seeds have been planted and the tender plants are trying to grow, you've got to understand this. You love the sinner, but you hate the sin. We don't hate anybody if we love Jesus. But you hate like hell how they behave. 
how they think, how they process, how they act when it is ungodly and unrighteous. You do not have to spend your life bending over backwards to please unrighteous and ungodly thinking and behavior. You will never be successful at that. And you, you say, well, I don't want to lose all my friends. These people would have to learn how to be a friend. They know how to be an acquaintance. We're born knowing how to be with people we like and feel comfortable with. A baby knows how to gravitate to somebody they like and feel comfortable with, but only a grown person has matured to know how to be a friend because a friend, talk to me somebody, a friend is what Jesus is teaching the disciples to be because a friend just doesn't love when you got something that they want. A friend loves at all times. And so you don't come out of your mama's womb knowing how to be a friend. Praise the Lord. You only come out of your mama's womb knowing how to get what you want. And that's an acquaintance. Hallelujah. That's, that's a person who's there sometimes for good times. Praise the Lord. But a friend is born again for adversity. Hallelujah. God has put something in them that's there for you. And they may not even know your name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so be careful. Darnell is that weed that looks like wheat. We must and say, oh, that ain't cool, that ain't cool. Yes, it is. Discernment is a gift of the Holy Spirit, necessary to take things to the next level. Listen to me. If you ain't been listening to me all night, I want you to hear this. You must become, if you're going to be instrumental in the ministry of Christ, you must have discernment. You must become a person who can know who they are with so you can help those around you. Praise the Lord. The parable, the story of the sower, the story of the soils. There's so much, it's, I wish I could, but it's impossible to unpack all that. So I think it'd be best. Y'all ready? Let's land the plane. Let's land the plane. Let's land the plane. The land of plane. Praise the Lord. Ooh, yeah. Boom. All right. All right. We stuck the landing. Here we go. I want for you to consider if, if, if those women, and you got to realize, women were ignored by rabbis and, and, and religious people in, this, in the time this story was written. And if Jesus could bring them on the scene and, 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 they, and provide for them the cocoon necessary for them to be all right, protect them from from all of the insults and, and, and all of the digging up of their history and all the accusations and then provide an environment for them to grow and develop to the point where they would support. Oh, Jesus. Can you, you got to wrap your mind around that. They were able to support. These women were able to support the ministry out of their means. And I know it's hard to, to think about but women were persecuted and dogged in that day and time. And these had to have a measure of strength and blessing to be able to function in the roles that they function in in that time. It's hard for women to function in those roles in this time. These sisters are still catching it to function in this time. Praise the Lord. Imagine the things that would be said about women, single women who traveled with the disciples. In 2020, I thought you'd understand if I broke it down. And so you've got to understand this isn't about the people. When you walk with Christ and you're filled with his spirit, you become strange to the people. You become different. And if you can't take the little heat that comes from carnal people who don't understand the transition your life is making, when you change from a church person to a Christian and then you change from just a baby Christian to a soldier for Christ, as you go from grace to grace and glory to glory, from level to level, I'm talking to somebody tonight, as you change levels and the heat comes, it's simply there to bust you out of the shell of, that the seed is in. You need some heat. 
You need some fertilizer. You need some wetness so that you crack your shell, bust out, grow up through the dirt, sun hit you, you handle it and keep growing. You need it to rain on you. You need the wind to blow on you. You need the dirt to come up through you. And then you give yourself to the Lord holy. We call it getting saved. I want you to get saved. I want you to give yourself to Christ. I want you to surrender to him right now. And after you do that, after you say, yes, Lord, I want for you to make sure you get close to the ministry. Ask some questions. You have to type it in. You have to just type it in tonight, right now. I want to get saved. If you're watching this, if you're watching it live or if you watch it later, I want to get saved. You type it in. We check, we check our, our, our comments and notes because you, they're, they're written by people. Praise the Lord. I want to give myself to Christ. I want to give myself to Jesus. Welcome home. Welcome home. Amen. Amen. I want to speak first uh, to everyone. I want everyone to sow into the ministry, to bless the ministry. We, we, we praise God for you. Thank God for what you've done, what you're doing now. But I want to speak particularly to women who were touched by the scripture you saw yourself in this. Something about Mary, something about the wife of Shuza, something about Susanna, Herod's assistant. You said, that's me. Something about being helped by Jesus, being healed by Jesus. You said, that's me. And so what I want you to do, I want you to join the effort to spread the seed. God's word changes the life of people. And the way God's word gets to the people, hallelujah, is you take it to them. And we, we right now are taking the gospel to people using digital means. Television, radio, the internet, streaming. But when this pandemic is over, they're going to be souls ripe. And you know what? It's a beautiful thing, digital work. But at some point, you're going to have to go see these people. You're going to have to touch these people. You're going to have to train and develop these people face to face. Even if they get saved, and I want you to get saved tonight in the digital world, Praise the Lord. At some point in the physical world, you don't need somebody to touch you. we got to take this love to the whole world. And I thank you that you're going to help us. Somebody, God's put it in your heart to help us. Amen? If there are, are women, I'm speaking particularly to sisters in Christ and women of God, you know God has already spoken to you. Be obedient. So into the kingdom. Lift your, your devices, those who are members of the church, you're already sowing into the kingdom, you're in Texan church, lift those devices with us. But I'm appealing. There may be 50 of you, there may be 100 of you, there may be 1,000 of you. Whoever you are, if God has spoken to you to join in with us and take this type of love and ministry to the world, start right now. You may have 50 cents. You may have $50,000. The amount isn't the issue, and you know it. It's your heart and what God is speaking to that heart for you to do. Lean in. Listen closely. Speak these words with me. Not as a debt I owe, but like a seed, as a seed. This whole lesson was about a seed. As a seed I sow, I won't eat my seed anymore. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much. We're getting ready to leave, leave this Bible study. Never leave the Lord Jesus Christ. Now may the grace of God and the sweet, sweet communion of the Holy Ghost rest with us and rule over our lives. Abide with us till we meet again. Let the people of God say amen. Thank you for supporting our ministry. 
giving is now easier than ever with these options. You can use e-giving by touching the link that is in the comments section of the broadcast, or you can also use e-giving on your cell phone by following the instructions for texting listed here. If you would like to mail your donations, please send them to the Love Center at P.O. Box 310-660, Atlanta, Georgia 31131. Start your day with 2 early in the morning, Monday through Saturday at 8.15 a.m. on Facebook Live. Study God's Word with us on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. on Facebook Live or watch the rebroadcast on YouTube or Instagram TV. Love Center Atlanta will be hosting a back to school backpack giveaway on Wednesday, August 19th at 11 a.m. Please come and get school supplies for your children entering the new school year until supplies last. Thank you for watching Shake the Nation. understand what I'm saying. You're not playing with some man. You're playing with God.